sensitive. As far as Europe is concerned, we're seeing a good demand in passenger cars, uh, 3 to 4 percent, which is very good for Europe. Plus, with the conflict of Russia and Ukraine, what's happened is that 10 million tires were coming in from Russia into uh, Europe. So that's given us a huge opportunity. Uh, as far as European operations are concerned, we've had a total turnaround. EBITDA margins are doubled. Mm. And we believe that the Flederstein brand is doing very good for us because our focus is on the ultra high performance tires for the cars like uh, Ferraris, Mercedes. Mm. There, our market share is really growing. And that's a high EBITDA margin uh, product for us. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, I'm pretty positive, optimistic as the year goes along. Obviously, there is inflation pressures. Yeah. Oil prices are at 110, so that's giving us a lot of pressure, challenges on our bottom line. Mm -hmm. I, I'll get to those <clears throat> pressures in just a second, but I want to talk about the gap on account of uh, Russia. Uh, will you need to ramp up production to be able to meet the demand? Yes, so we are ramping up, uh, we're de-bottlenecking our plants in Hungary and in Holland and also in India because now India is exporting close to 20% of our production goes into Europe and to the US. So we're de-bottlenecking all these plants to try and see how soon we can uh, take on this challenge of uh, the demand that's coming up in mm. Europe. And what is the current capacity utilization across plants? So we are at around 85-90%, okay. uh, coming up from 70-75. Some plants are at 95, some plants, but overall we are at around 85-90%. Mm. So do you feel the need to put in any fresh investments? I mean, you started a new plant in Andhra Pradesh in uh, 2020. At this point in time, any new CapEx plans? No, no new capex, small capexes, just to look at de-bottlenecking. What the focus is really to now consolidate internally because we've put up three large plants in the past 10 years. Uh, our ROC has been down. So our whole focus is how can we improve our rate on uh, investment, our ROC, uh, return on our capital employed. And that's what we are looking at, de-bottlenecking, increasing our productivity. Mm. Uh, I uh, want to mention one thing that we are looking at a lot of digitization in our plants. Uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. We've opened a digital hub in London mm. where the boys are studying the data from the equipments to try and see how we can uh, increase speeds of our uh, machines and get more production out of them. Okay. You know, you said that you want to improve on your ROCE. What is the target that you've set for yourself and how do you get to that besides, of course, the efficiency gains that you just spoke of? Well, we are looking at sweating all our assets, uh, looking at small investments in technology and in digitization. Our target is to look at upwards of 14 to 15 percent. We've taken a vision of 2026 to become a $5 billion company mm. with an ROC of above 14 to 15 percent. And do you believe that you feel confident of being able to achieve yes, that given I, the uncertainty? I totally uh, believe we will be able to do that because the entire company's focus now is to see how we can sweat the assets that the company has already invested in. And. Uh, you know, newer markets, you talked about one lever in the form of the replacement demand uh, that you hope to capture now that Russia is uh, out of the market, uh, so to speak. Any other new sort of areas of focus where you believe that you could penetrate? Well, U.S. is a, a new market for us. Um, that's our next growth market. So for me, domestic markets are Europe and India. And now we have set up an office in Atlanta. We have around 25, 30 people there. Uh, we are selling close to $50 million. Our target for 2026 is to reach over and above $300 million uh, over there. Mm. So America becomes our next uh, target market. We've already launched the Fredestein passenger car tires, and recently we've launched the Apollo truck tires into the U.S. We're getting a very good response from the market. Uh, demand is there. The biggest issue today that's challenging us is supply chain. Hmm. Uh, and that's all over the world. Yeah, and but specifically where hmm. in the supply chain are you finding the big challenges? Well, it's the efficiencies of the Indian ports, hmm. number one. Hmm. Number two is uh, supply of containers. Uh, uh, the ships which were reaching Europe in 90 days is taking over four months now. Uh, it's just the efficiencies of the ports all across hmm. the world. And the freight rates have just skyrocketed. Yeah. They've gone like five or six times mm. over. So the biggest challenge... So is it a container shortage issue? I mean, how, from going from 90 to four months, I'm trying to understand why that's the it's case. It's a container shortage issue. It is also... Uh, uh, a clearance docking, issue? Docking. Docking at the port. Let's mm. say for Rotterdam, the ship is actually going from India to Sri Lanka. There's a transshipment happening. Then from there it goes to... Sometimes it's even gone to UK because there's no port availability for docking at Rotterdam. Then it's standing in UK, then it comes to Rotterdam. So we are having huge uh, supply chain issues. Mm. And that's something that we need to tackle. 
how how will you be able to tackle that well the main issue is to try and do more near sourcing mm. so if we need it for europe try and de bottleneck hungary and uh, holland. our holland plant so try and do as much as possible local production rather than getting from india mm -hmm. uh, you know that's one of the big challenges that you spoke of uh, neeraj but just in in prioritization of risk that you see to being able to get to the five billion dollar number by 2026 which is the aspiration and the goal uh, what do you foresee as as the big challenges outside of the supply chain issues well the biggest challenge is going to be the input cost uh, as, as how I, much of pressure are you feeling on the margins already on account of that well india is down uh, by 50 percent whereas europe we've been able to pass on prices into the customers because the competition has done it Whereas India, we always have a lag effect of three to six months. We're trying to see how much we can do. But there's obviously, COVID has taught us one thing that we need to take out the bad costs and mm. invest in good costs. So we've done a lot of cleaning up, uh, so to say, in, within the organization, made it more robust, mm. made it more efficient, and trying and de-bottlenecking overhead costs within the organization. What kind of cost savings so have like you been able to So like fixed expenses have come down 14%. Okay, so it could be warehouses, it could be people, it could be uh, 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 fat lying around the organization, you know, because it is an old company, it's been there since 1975. So one, really, when for, uh, COVID came, one started focusing internally a lot mm. to try and see how we can get rid of bad costs. And I think the organization has done wonderful by reducing fixed costs by nearly 14%. Mm -hmm. Uh, you talked about good costs and bad costs. Uh, you gave me an example of the bad costs, so to speak, <laughs> that you've been able to weed out. Yeah. In terms of good costs, are, are you essentially talking about the kind of bets you're making on technology? Is that, yes. is that what you're driving so we, at? You know, Shri, we have five uh, key pillars that we've identified for ourselves to get to the vision of 2026. So the first is di uh, digitalization, where we're putting in a lot of money. Like I mentioned to you, we've opened mm. a hub in, a digital hub in London. Uh, the second key pillar is technology. So we're putting a lot of money into R&D. We have two centers, one in Europe, one in uh, Chennai. We have over 350 scientists. So we're putting a lot of money in technology. The third key pillar is brand. So as you know, we have a tie with um, Manchester United. Mm. We also support our football league, uh, Chennai Football uh, Club in India. So we're putting a lot of money behind the brand. Sachin is, Sachin Tendulkar is our brand ambassador. And he's not cricket, but he's the god of sports. So, and that's my favorite, and he's an uh, amazing brand ambassador to have. Uh, the fourth is uh, people, because we believe people are our assets, so we're putting a lot of training, education, tie up with mm. universities on our, uh, on our people. And the fifth is sustainability. So we're doing, our target on sustainability is to become carbon neutral by 2050, mm. and to have 40% of our raw materials be sustainable by 2030. So we're putting a lot of money behind sustainability because if we don't, we will no longer exist. So we mm. need to put in a lot of money behind sustainability. Okay. So these are the key five pillars. Those are the good costs where we'll be putting money in. Well, you know, uh, speaking about some <coughs> of the near-term challenges, we've also got a power crisis uh, in India at this point in time. Yeah. Many states facing shortages, uh, including Andhra Pradesh, which is where you've set up your new plant in 2020. How bad are things? Well, you know, our Andhra plant is a brand new baby and we were hoping that we don't have such issues but because of coal, uh, coal shortages in Andhra, they've given the government, the state government has given a directive to reduce by 50%. So we are using Chennai to mix our rubber and get it into Andhra. But we are down, we are down and it's hurting us. So what we are now looking at, we've already invested into a solar company in Chennai. So all our plants in India now are looking at other mm. sources of energy. So there is capex coming up, but small amounts of capex that will come in to look at how we can become more uh, uh, solar powered rather than be dependent on coal. Mm -hmm. That's what we are looking at. So how much could this hurt uh, production in terms of? Uh, well, I, I, overall, I think it's down by five to ten percent uh, overall mm -hmm. in India. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, we'll be able to resolve it within the next few weeks. Okay. Well, uh, what's what's this Davos? Uh, what's been the big mm -hmm. highlight for you from this Davos? I think India is shining in Davos, uh, as the Russians, Chinese, no one has uh, come here. But India is really shining, and India is a great opportunity because uh, everyone's talking about a GDP of above eight and a half percent. And really, India has really shined. And uh, uh, hats off to the government; they've done a great job. And uh, I think that's a golden opportunity for people to come and invest.
Well, Neeraj, we wish you the very best of luck as you uh, get to that $5 billion mark Thank by you. 2026. Appreciate your time here. Thank you. Very May you nice have a you. Sachin Tendulkar like innings. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'll take a break here. Uh, there's a lot more coming up on Davos 2022. Stay with us. We're back in a moment with more.